In this video, I'm going to take a look at amino acids. So I've got a model kit. It's a partial model, actually, because I've not got anything on there. I'll explain why in a second. So why are they called amino acids? Well, we've got an amino group. So there's the NH2 group here. And we've also got an acid group. So there's the COH group there. As well as these two functional groups, the amino group and the acid group, we've also got a hydrogen bonded to this carbon, and we've got a variable R group. So that's why I haven't put anything on there. Now, the type of amino acids that we need to study at A level are what we call alpha amino acids. And the reason for the alpha is because the two functional groups, the amino and the acid group, they are bonded to the same carbon. And that makes them alpha amino acids. Quickly show you this amino acid here. It's still an amino acid because we've got the amino group and we've got the carboxylic acid group. But you can see now that there are two carbons between the two functional groups. In other words, these aren't bonded to the same carbon. This would actually be called a beta amino acid because there are two carbons between the functional groups. So alpha amino acids are the ones we study where these two functional groups are bonded to the same carbon. And you can see there, I've written up in green, the general formula of an alpha amino acid R, C, H, N, H, 2, C, O, O, H. We'll just take a look at some simple amino acids. So obviously when the R group is an H, that's the simplest of all the amino acids, and that's known as glycine. When the R group's a CH3 group, we call it alanine. And the last one we'll look at is when the R group's a CH2OH group, we call it serine. Now, because amino acids contain an acid group and a base group, remember acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors, this can actually react with itself. And what happens is the H plus ion on the COOH is donated so that end of the molecule would become COO minus, and that H plus would be accepted by the lone pair on the nitrogen and form an NH3 plus group. So you can see there we've actually formed an ion, and its name is a German word. I'm going to do my best to pronounce it properly. Apologies if it's wrong, but I think it's pronounced something like this, Zwitter Ion. I would normally say Zwitter Ion, which is probably totally wrong, but there you go, Zwitter Ion. But I'm not going to say that throughout the video, I'm afraid. A couple of important things to say about the Zwitter Ion. It has no overall charge, so you can see we've got one plus on the left and one minus on the right. They obviously cancel each other out. So there's no overall charge on this ion, and also Another important fact is that it forms at what's known as the isoelectric point, and that is a, a specific pH value. And because this R group is variable, then different amino acids have different isoelectric points. So the Zwitter ion forms at a specific pH corresponding to the R group. So what we're going to do now in the video is we're going to take a couple of different amino acids and we are going to look at the different forms that they would have at different pH values. So I've drawn up on the board there some information. Alanine, its isoelectric point, IEP for short, has a pH of 6.01. So we'll draw up the, the form that it would be in at that pH. So of course, because 6.01 is the isoelectric point, it forms its vit ion, where the H plus from the carboxylic acid group has been donated across to the base group, the NH2 group. So let's imagine that we drop the pH slightly. So we go from 6.01 to 5.01. So these conditions are slightly more acidic 
is at a lower pH, slightly more acidic conditions than the isoelectric point. So in other words, we are in acidic conditions. In other words, there are H plus ions present to react or interact with the Zwitter ion. So if you have a look at the Zwitter ion, you can see where the H plus ions could go on to. They can obviously go on to here. So at pH below the isoelectric point, we're in acidic conditions. And so we basically just, where can we put H plus ions? And in this case, we can put them on the CO minus group. So we're going to have this form present. So nothing's happened on here. We can't put H plus ions on there. But we can put an H plus ion on here. And so we get that. Now let's change the pH the other way. So instead of being at 6.01, we're at 7.01. So we're now in basic conditions or more basic conditions than at the isoelectric pH. So if we're in basic conditions, we're in conditions that will accept protons. Another way to think about it is you could say you've got hydroxide ions in there. So what's going to happen if you've got this in basic conditions? Well, any H pluses that could be accepted will be accepted. So we're going to lose an H plus from this NH3 plus group. So that part of the Zwitter ion will change now and we'll end up with, instead of H3N+, plus, we'll end up with H2N and the rest stays the same. You can also see that, remember, this is neutral, no overall charge because you've got one plus and one minus. At the acidic pH, so more acidic conditions in the isoelectric pH, then we have a positively charged ion present. And at the more basic pH, compared to the isoelectric pH, we've actually got a negatively charged ion. So I've changed the amino acid to glutamic acid now, and we've got an isoelectric point of pH 3.22. So you can see I've drawn up the Zwitter ion on the board there. So this is what form it would be in at 3.22. So the H plus from the COH group has been donated across to the NH2 group. Now the point I want to make here is you'll notice we've got an H plus here in the R group. That stays put. So when you're forming the Zwitter ion, just a general rule of thumb, you're only going to swap the H plus across from the, the alpha carbon, if you like. So don't do anything with that just yet. Reason, probably due to proximity, although I'm not exactly 100% sure. These are closer together than these are here. So that's probably why the transfer is across that way. So let's do exactly the same as before. We're going to drop the pH to a pH below the isoelectric point. So in other words, we are in acidic conditions or more acidic conditions. So we've got H plus around. And then ask yourself, where could I put an H plus on the Zwitter ion? Where could it go? And it's obviously going to go here. So what we're going to get, this stays the same. And the COO minus becomes COOH. And notice again, we've still got we've got a positively charged ion now in those acidic conditions. Now let's raise the pH to one pH unit above the isoelectric pH. So we're still effectively below seven, but we're in more basic conditions now than the isoelectric pH. And so we're effectively um, we're going to we're in conditions that can accept protons from the Zwitter ion. So look carefully at the molecule. Now this is where 
you could you can either score one out of two marks in the exam or two out of two marks so I would think where could we take H pluses from well we can actually take one from the NH three plus group so it becomes that can we take anything off here well no there's no H plus to take off so that stays the same and now we can factor in the R group we've got CH2 CH2 COH well we could accept that H plus basic conditions will accept accept that H plus as well so we get that so we'll finish with this amino acid we've got lysine here its isoelectric point is pH 9.59 so at this pH, we'll have this Vitter ion formed. And remember, we're only going to transfer the H plus from the alpha carbon. So the COH hydrogen will be donated to the NH2 group on that carbon. So we'll get this Vitter ion looking like that. You'll notice also that the isoelectric pH is um, reasonably high, 9.59. And that's due to the fact that we've got this extra basic group in the amino acid. And if you remember back um, earlier on in the video, we had the amino acid with the extra COOH group in. Uh, its isoelectric point was quite low. So I've drawn up the form that the, uh, this, the amino acid will be in at the pH that's lower than the isoelectric pH. So again, I've just changed it by one pH unit. So just ask yourself, where can I put H pluses onto this? Well, obviously I can put one here. So you can see I've done that there. But we can also put an H plus onto this nitrogen here. And so we've got an H3 plus there, as opposed to just an H2. So again, in the exam, there'd be a couple of marks going there. If you just put it on here, you'd get one. But if you remember, it can actually go on both of these parts. You'd get both of the marks. And finally, I've raised the pH to 10.59, so we're in basic conditions now compared to the isoelectric pH. So we can accept protons from this. Well, where can we accept protons from? Just here. So we've gone from NH3 plus to NH2. There was no proton to accept there, so that stays the same. And we can't accept a proton from NH2 group, so that stays the same as well.